Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Kavinsky's Tutorials. Today I'm looking at the GeoShred 5.0 update, which brings in in-app purchases for incredibly realistic acoustic sounds. Like, just to give you one example before we get stuck into the intro proper here, this tenor sax, which I'm going to play on screen using the touchscreen interface. Now, I'm no uh, Jordan Rudis level style geo shredder. Um, if you're a regular on my channel, you'll know that I'm a huge fan of MIDI, generative MIDI and that kind of thing. My keyboard skills are not brilliant, but later in the video, I'm gonna let you hear uh, Jordan Rudis playing this, actually, because he sent me a video uh, last week that included a little bit of him playing uh, this. If you don't know who he is, He's the keyboard player for a band called Dream Theater, and uh, he's the his company Wisdom is the publisher of this app, and um, he is regarded as one of the best, if not the best, keyboardists in the world. Um, so yeah, he's a pretty legit guy that they've got uh, in here, giving them a lot of advice. Now the developer is a company called Mo Forte. So they're a bunch of heavyweight intellectual guys on the, um, you know, DSP experts, basically. Uh, I think they're a bunch of PhDs and stuff like that from Stanford. Um, they have some people on their team who've been heavily involved in uh, the development of physical modeling. Um, and I think uh, Pat, in fact, one of the guys, told me one of the people there is one of the de facto creators, really, of physical modeling. So um, these guys know what they're doing. And then there's also a collaboration with uh, another Italian company called Audio Modeling. And they make these incredibly beautiful and realistic sounding acoustic instruments. So GeoShred before already had um, a lot of uh, modeled it's, it's, it's also physical modeling based. Um, actually, I believe the audio modeling stuff involves physical modeling, but it also involves other things as well. Like they talk about something called sample morphing and so on. This all gets a bit technical for me. So if you're interested in that, you can um, read up about it online. But um, yeah, basically this is a new thing for GeoShred to have these kind of sounds added. Um, these are extremely high quality. Now, the in-app purchases for these uh, six different sounds, so um, saxophone, oboe, clarinet, flute, violin, and cello, the in-app purchases for these are $15 each, and they are um, $75 if you want to buy the whole collection. They don't call it a bundle because it's not actually different apps. Um, so yeah, if you want to get the whole collection, that's $75. So it's quite expensive by iOS standards. But you've got to be aware that um, if we look at, uh, you know, Audio Modeling's website, for example, their store, um, if you want to buy their clarinets pack, that's $170 worth right there. Uh, if you want to buy their Woodwinds pack, it's $750. Now, I think um, the desktop apps uh, are extremely, extremely professional instruments with a lot of tweaking. Um, in GeoShred, we get some ability to tweak these sounds. I don't, I have not used Swam's desktop apps, so I cannot um, make a direct comparison with that. Um, but it's worth mentioning. Um, but I think for your average iOS user, they don't need that level of control and they're maybe happy to uh, get these at a vastly cheaper price with a little bit less tweakability. 
but um, much more affordable. Um, like I say, though, if you really, um, you know, if you're very, very, very serious about wanting to get the most realistic uh, woodwind sounds or whatever that you can, then um, you know you might want to go and take a look at the, the the desktop stuff from audio modeling. I also want to mention that audio modeling are going to be bringing out their own app soon as well. And again, I'm not exactly sure what. I know I've got some idea of what the differences are going to be, and I'm going to tell you one of the major differences in a minute, but I, you know, the app is not out yet. I don't really know. Um, anyway, they're going to be bringing out their own app, and the one big difference that I do know will be there is that when audio, audio modeling bring out their own app, you will be able to pipe regular MIDI into it. So, for example, you'll be able to use uh, an arpeggiator in... Um, AUM, you know, something like, for example, Fug Machine. Um, but the GeoShred Swarm sounds cannot be triggered by regular MIDI. They can only be triggered either using the on-screen interface or by attaching an MPE instrument, like, for example, the Seaboard um, or the Morph or whatever, now, um, later in the video, I'll connect one of those. I haven't got one connected now. But you can um, control this with an MPE controller, but you cannot control these swarm sounds. So these uh, sounds in these six and up purchases. You cannot control these with a regular MIDI keyboard um, or with uh, apps that just produce regular MIDI. So... Uh, that's important to be aware of. It's important to be aware of. Now, what am I going to go into in this video? <clears throat> I'm not going to try and make it a very, very, very thorough GeoShred tutorial because actually Jordan has already done that. Uh, he's got a very good, f I think it's about 40 minutes long, master class for GeoShred up. I'll put a link to that above. So um, if you don't know how to use the app at all, um, you know, you'll get a lot of good tips there. But what I'm going to do here, um, definitely, I mean, when you watch my, my video, you're going to have a good idea uh, how to use the app. You're going to have a good idea of different aspects of the interface. But I'm going to focus on just a few things that I think are important for um, using these um, new in-app purchases. Because I think there are already a lot of people who have GeoShred, um, and I don't want this to be an in-depth tutorial on the whole app because it's just very, very deep. Um, if, if it looks simple, but actually it's extremely, extremely customizable. Um, it has a whole bunch of... I didn't want to open that one, actually. You know, if you go into the settings and stuff, um, there's really, really a lot of different things that you can tweak in this app. It's incredibly customizable. So I'm just going to go into a few key details. I'm not going to try and do everything. Um, now, another thing I want to mention is uh, some people may already have the um, Roly noise swarm in-app purchases available there. So... Um, Obviously, I think if you have already bought these in Noise, you will know that the main problem with buying these in Noise is that they are not accessible in the audio unit. So that's a huge difference between uh, buying these in Noise and buying them in GeoShred. Um, no question about it. I would choose GeoShred over Noise because personally, I these were Noise was one of the first apps I bought actually, when I got into um, iOS music. Um, and I, I, you know, a Seaboard also was, um, you know, one of the first things I bought. But I found it incredibly frustrating not to be able to use these um, in the audio unit. Um, yeah, so GeoShred, you can finally use these in the audio units. That's wonderful. But it's also good to be aware that um, the sounds are not exactly the same. If you look at the um, presets, for example, in noise, you have, for example, um, double bass sounds 
in noise, you don't have that in uh, GeoShred. Or for example, with the string instruments um, in Rolly Noise, some of them have um, pizzicato sounds. And in GeoShred, there are no, um, no pizzicato sounds available. And uh, I spoke to Pat Scandalis, um, who's one of the guys with uh, Mo Forte. And by the way, absolutely top guy. Um, we have exchanged a bunch of messages. Uh, super helpful, super nice guy. Um, yeah, uh, we talked at length about um, these things. And yeah, one thing he mentioned is that maybe um, some pizzicato thing will be added to this at some point. But at the moment, um, you know, they're not... They're really, I think all of these apps are going to offer different things. Um, you know, this one and the audio modeling one. Uh, in general, with this one, they're trying to take advantage of the GeoShred interface, which is really um, set up as... You know, it's all kind of about the slides and stuff like that. But I have to say, personally, I do think there'd be no harm in having pizzicato sounds in here, and I can't see any reason, really, why it doesn't have them. So I hope that that is something that gets added. I think it would be cool. Okay, so yeah, I'm going to look at the um, interface, different key aspects. Uh, I'll look at a few ideas for using this um, as an audio unit. Like, what are the advantages of having this as an audio unit? Um, what could we do with multiple instances of it? What kind of effects would sound good on these sort of things? So we'll look at some stuff like that. Um, and yeah, uh, later in the video, I'll um, show you a little clip of uh, the video that um, Jordan sent me the other day. So that's uh, something to look forward to. That was a nice little surprise. Because um, he's a le legitimate, um, super famous and highly respected dude. <laughs> All right. So um, let's move on to the next part of the video. Um, let's just listen to some more sounds here. So when we click up here, we can see different grouped presets. And for now, I'm just going to click on Geo Violins. And you can see we have 10 different violin presets. So first, let me just let you hear briefly what they sound like. Bring my iPad down from its stand. So this is just our general violin. Here we have this resonator. You hear that resonance there? Next one, vowel. Now, one thing that I want to point out is this finger expression button. So there are two ways we can uh, do expression. So one is that we keep finger expression off here and we just use our fingers on the pads and then we use this XY pad to control expression. Okay, or we can press finger expression, in which case the pad itself will become basically like an XY controller. So with finger expression enabled, it is more expressive, but it takes more skill to play. So it's something that you might want to experiment and see, you know, what works better for you. Um, so you can see here, we also have a few important things here. For example, in this setting, we have here harmonics off, or we can turn on the first or second harmonic. Let's listen to what that is like to change that. So that's harmonic off, and that's bringing in the first harmonic. And then that's bringing in the second harmonic. Um, we have other things here like bow position. Now echo, so if you listen, there's a delay on. With a couple of things we can do, we can just switch it off. So now there's no delay, or we could just reduce the amount. By the way, these um, knobs generally work with um, horizontal movements, not really vertical, horizontal. Okay. 
Now, of course, remember that this is an audio unit, so if you don't like the delay, you want to use your own delay or whatever, just turn it off and attach your own delay in the chain. Reverb, okay. Generally don't like too much reverb. Um, there's a portamento thing for low velocity. Um, that's, let's see if we can manage that with this. I'm not sure if it's going to work. Let's see. Right, you hear that? Um, because I've turned on finger expression, when I'm playing near the bottom of a pad, I'll get low velocity. And then when I have low velocity portamento enable, we will get that portamento when I'm pressing one pad. And then press another. But if I'm playing at high velocity, that shouldn't happen. Let's see. Right? See, we don't get that at high velocity. Okay. So that's um, that one. Let's um, look at another preset. So this is called Swell. Let's play with the expression pad. Now you can see I had finger expression enabled on the last one, but when I change preset, all these things are going to change. Um, if you don't like the way these are set up, you can very easily save them. You just change things and then uh, go into the preset menu and, and click um, Save and whatever. Hang on. Oh, not there. Ah, where is that? Hang on. Oh, that's here, yeah. Um, save, save as we have here. So you can use that to make your own presets. Okay, so let's hear with the... I'll use finger expression. You see here, this has this Moog filter going on. See the next one. So see here, um, look at the way the keyboard is set up. It's diatonic. So we're just getting the white notes. Now, um, these kind of things we can set up if we go to, let me check, I think it's performance settings. Yeah, performance settings, um, keyboard, we can see, we can choose scales and things like that and the root and so on. So we can customize the keyboard in here. Like I said, this is deep. It's very, very tweakable. Um, another thing we can see here then, right, when we go into these performance settings is we can, uh, Okay, set up various things here. For example, we can control the way it quantizes. So does it slide or not between notes? For example, when it's on piano, you won't get... You hear that there's no slide there? But now I've tr triggered slide. So a few things like that. Um, this is a very important little um, thing. So look at the difference if I put this up. You hear how that's basically identical to the piano mode. There's no slide. And if I bring it right down to the bottom, we're getting um, very, very fine level of slide control. But I want to point out one thing that's very important. Because um, we have a pitch rounding and a snap thing, these are pretty cool. So when we tap on the keys here, or pads or whatever you want to call them, it's, it's um, rounding the pitch, so it's snapping to the pitch. So when you hit a key, it's always going to be in tune. Except when you, so you've got to be careful. That's only if you're not gliding into it. That's if you're tapping on it. 
So you see what this what this slide thing is doing is um, yeah controlling that the level of slide between them. Okay, let's uh, jump out of that. So here we have this one with a kind of meditative drone, the sympathetic resonance. I'm going to put on finger expression. You see the difference with finger expression, enabled and not enabled? Again, if I don't want to enable finger expression, I can use the expression pad up here. put up more sympathetic resonance. It sounds a bit weird. Yeah, that's a bug, I think. Okay, let's go to the next one. You see this looper thing we've got going on here? We've got an ARP. We've got the latch on there, so this is Sustained, and we can control the movement. So I'm really glad it has an arpeggiator. We've got our arp rate button. Lovely filter here. So this is a completely dry violin. So if you're wanting to use external delay and reverb and so on, this would be a good choice. Scale, see what's convenient here is that the um, control surface, right? I always I bit, still get a bit confused with the terminology here, right? Yeah, so that's the one they call the control surface. So, um, you know, it, it just has this uh, key and scale thing set up here. This is what I was saying, you know, uh, you can you, you can go in, sorry, we could do this through the, um, the performance settings. We could set up the um, scale and things like that. But obviously, it's a lot more convenient, a lot more convenient to just have that in here. So obviously, here um, we're choosing our key and scale. And I just want to show you that there is a very good selection of different keys and scales, including chords. But actually, those um, these swarm instruments are. Uh, mono instruments, so. This app is extremely popular in India. A lot of people use it to perform traditional Indian music. So a lot of, a lot of stuff there. I'm not sure actually if, um, you can import uh, custom scales. Maybe you can. How do I get out of this? Ah. I don't know why it's not letting me get out of that screen. Let me just choose something. Okay, there we go, right. Okay, so those um, are some of the violin ones. 
So let's uh, listen to the cello. So I'm not going to go through all those things again. I just let you hear a little bit, one or two things. <laughs> That's the resonant one. I think this sounds pretty good with fewer notes. Put on the finger expression. So, um, looking at the sax, we have this growl and flutter. So, that's what growl sounds like. And that's what flutter sounds like. By the way, one important thing to be aware of, if you're attaching an external MPE keyboard to this, when you um, want to use the Y-axis on your keyboard, you're also going to have to enable finger expression here. Otherwise, if you see, if you um, click flutter, for example, and uh, you don't have finger expression triggered, then nothing's going to happen when you do stuff on the Y-axis. So be aware of that. You want to do this from your external MPE keyboard, you also need to put on finger expression. So that's flutter. And that's growl. And let's let you hear what the formant knob does to it. That's the formant. That's the sax with the resonator. Sometimes getting some glitchy noises switching between presets seems to be a bug. It seems maybe to be connected especially to going um, from the resonator. I don't know if that can be got rid of. Uh, I hope so. Sometimes happens, sometimes doesn't. See, we're getting it again there.
Again, remember that that's set on guitar, but you can switch it to slide. So let's say, for example, uh, you want to change the, the, um, the reverb setup. We can go in and go to Model and FX, or sorry, the Echo, not the Reverb, right? So we can go in there and we can, you know, change in here the settings for Echo or uh, with the settings for reverb, oh, wonder who that is. Um, the amp and so on, and cabinet, the sympathetic resonance. Then for the swam instruments, we can go in and also change things in here. For example, let me just do the vibrato one. But again, remember, you can do your own vibrato by just wobbling left to right. And you can do tremolo by going up and down, as long as finger expression is enabled. Right, so that's tremolo. That's vibrato. The, the pitch rounding and snap function make this a really, really playable instrument. This is very, very clever what GeoShred did with that. I don't want this to be too long, so I'm just giving you a quick idea what each one sounds like. Let's listen to the overblow. You can hear that more clearly here. Because on the last one we had uh, some filter that was
This diatonic one is useful when you want to play kind of wild and fast and not worry too much about going out of tune because of this wonderful snap and pitch rhythm. I mean, let me let you hear the dry one. Because here you can really hear the instrument unembellished and just get very clearly what it sounds like. We haven't heard flute with the growl. Let's hear flutter. Let's hear overblow. Let's hear all three together. <laughs> Again, remember we've got things like the vibrato slider. And again, remembering you've got the choice between finger expression or using the expression pad. That was not very beautifully played. Sometimes have to wait for these to load. You know, these are CPU intensive instruments. Now, of course, we have um, things like the octave button up here. Which is really cool to use with the ARP, actually. But you can also, of course, use it while performing, you know. Remember that these are modeled on real acoustic instruments. They do have limited range. The, um, the scale setting is one of my favorites because it's really nice to go in and experiment with different scales. So we're on the oboe.
And by the way, do remember that it, it's easy to get a bit carried away uh, with the <laughs> vibrato and things like that, just because you can do it and you're not used to having that level of expression. But it's really, um, it's going to get a bit cheesy, actually, if you overdo those things. So, you know, you might, less is more, to be honest, when it comes to these things. Let's hear growl, flutter, formant. When you press finger expression, the XY pad seems to be turned off. So that will only do something when finger expression is off. I know it is still working. Mm, maybe not. Yeah, no, the pad is not working. So finger expression will give you a lot of control, but it is also more difficult to play. Um, and I'm still not very experienced with this, to be honest. Because when finger expression is off, you don't need to worry about changes in velocity, depending on where you touch a key. But when finger expression is on, you know, if you if you hit the top of one key and then hit the bottom of another one, you're going to be getting these very sudden changes in velocity that sounds very unnatural. So you need to practice more to play well with finger expression. But finger expression is nice that you can get this real low velocity playing. Okay, so now um, let's see, let's see. Let's look at how to uh, connect 
an external MPE controller and playing it with the Rolly Seaboard. Okay, so connecting an MPE controller, well, in connecting a controller in AUM, we go into Bluetooth MIDI settings. You can see I've already connected my Seaboard. Then over here, I click uh, add my Seaboard block. And now, first time you connect a controller, it's important to go in and click on MIDI in settings. Now, there is a bug in AUM, at least for me, where sometimes when I click this MIDI thing, it does not open. Um, unfortunately, GeoShred have not been able to replicate that, it seems. But I want to mention it because it actually just happened to me just a minute ago. So, uh, yeah, it's still a small bug there. Um, so, you need to maybe look for your controller here. Um, if your controller is not here, then just try the regular MPE. But uh, for Seaboard, they kind of did some things to make it perform better with this. So I'm going to select the Seaboard Geo Swarm because I'm using it with the, the Swarm sounds. Uh, if I was using it with some other, just, um, the, you know, the non-Swarm sounds in Geo Shred, you could check out one of these settings. By the way, these things are highly, highly editable. Uh, if you know what you're doing. That's what I was saying, like this app can get really, really, really deep, really deep. We can do curves and things to um, change the pressure and stuff. <laughs> so yeah, if you're, if you're really into, um, you know, getting extreme levels of control, you might want to go in and uh, check out these things in the app. I just deleted that, it's back to normal. Okay, now I also just had some strange behavior where my Seaboard was playing weirdly after I connected it, and I then disconnected my Seaboard and connected it again, and it seemed to be fine now. So whether this is an issue with my Seaboard or whether it is a bug in the app, I'm not 100% sure. But I um, have spoken to uh, GeoShred about this because during the beta there were problems with the Seaboard and uh, some of those problems definitely got fixed and I thought that everything was working perfectly again. But I have had issues twice today so far, so um, I think there's still a little issue there and I hope that it gets fixed um, as soon as possible. Okay, um, so... Let's look at a few things. Now, again, if you're used to um, playing rolly noise, for example, uh, you will be used with these sounds to um, getting, uh, you know, just sort of baked in expression on the y-axis. But here we um, press finger expression. And if I turn on flutter, then when I play my um, keyboard, when I move up on the y-axis, I'll start to get those flutter sounds. And their growl. Uh, these things are, these also have curves that you can um, mess with. If you go into the menu and you go to control surface and you go here, uh, you click here, uh, you can go down and set, set up these things. Uh, with another curve. Again, you can adjust this to get it exactly the way you want. Um, another thing is, how do we get... Uh, let me turn finger expression off. So, for example, if I just play, and play a note here, and I use the XY pad, I'll turn off growl, actually. Um, how do we get this kind of effect on the Seaboard? Well, basically, just by using pressure. So that's the difference between playing this on an MPE controller and playing it on the screen. If when we play on the screen, again, a little glitch there, we have to go up and down to get that when we're playing on the controller. 
We're just pressing. So controller has some advantages, but it also has disadvantages because I'll tell you what, you can play a lot faster and a lot more accurately in some ways on the glass screen. So this is something you might want to uh, weigh up. Okay, let's uh, move on and watch Jordan's uh, video. And then I'll just uh, finish up with some concluding statements. So at the beginning of this, Jordan is talking about a bug I found that he was unable to replicate. Actually, later we found it and that bug has been sorted out now. Uh, the, I'm just, it's hard to cut that. Uh, it's a big part of the intro. Mainly, I just want you to hear how well he's playing this. It's a very good example of the advantages of using the GeoShred screen, glass screen interface, rather than a MIDI controller, because there is no way in hell that you could play like this on a Seaboard, for example. Hey, Gavin, Jordan Rudis here. How you doing? Hey, I was just talking to Pat and doing some testing on my various iPads. And uh, I'm so sorry you're having that problem. Uh, and we really want to know what it is and want you to be happy. But I've been banging away on all my devices and this is the only result I can come up with. So Gavin, so good luck with everything, and I look forward to when you can shred smoothly. So uh, thanks to Jordan for that, and I'm sure you'll agree, really great playing. As I say, this is where GeoShred shines. Playing it on an iPad, on your screen, or on a phone, of course. Advantage of phone is that you can get the 3D touch. So that's the disadvantage of the iPad, there's no 3D touch. Now, we can just, this, this is what you'd be getting with 3D touch, you know, this kind of sound. The difference would be that uh, you wouldn't have to move on the y-axis to get that. You would get that by just pressing down on your screen. So if you have a 3D touch phone, I definitely uh, envy you because I only have iPads. I really wish that iPad had a 3D touch screen. It would be so cool to be able to just press on the glass and get those kind of effects. It would be amazing. Um, yeah, let me take that off a second. Um, so now when it comes to playing slowly and with some feeling, I'm gonna put on an effect here, by the way, I really like this. This is an app which is not out yet, but I have permission from the developer to uh, tease it. He said that he didn't mind. It's called Velvet Machine by Yuri Turov, the guy who does Shroom, and I really love it, especially for ambient stuff and things like that. You know, playing this kind of thing, it feels very nice to me to do on the Seaboard because you're able to press in to the keys
So for slow playing, I think I would maybe prefer playing on an actual MP controller. <clears throat> for fast playing, or if your intonation is not very good, um, you know, Seaboard is quite hard to play. It's very hard to play well, actually. This is much easier. It's much, much easier to play quickly. And it's easy to play accurately because of the snap function, the pitch rounding and stuff. So that is uh, one of the great things about GeoShred. And as I said earlier, I definitely prefer it to rolly noise because at least now we can um, use it as an audio unit. Um, this is great because it was very frustrating to me not to be able to do that. But that's not to say that I have no frustrations with this. It is really a pity that it doesn't take a normal MIDI in. And like I said, if you want to use normal MIDI, you're going to have to wait for audio modeling's own app. So in that case, it's possible that you might end up, you know, having paid for similar but different sounds three times, one time in Rolly noise, uh, when you had these great sounds, but you weren't able to use them as an audio unit here. Uh, where you can finally use them as an audio unit, but not MIDI. And then um, in the audio modeling in their own app, um, where you'll be able to use MIDI and you'll be able to you know, use MP MIDI or normal MIDI. Um, but I don't believe that the audio modeling app will have, you know, I don't know if it'll even have a keyboard built in. Maybe it will, maybe it won't, I have no idea. <clears throat> but it certainly won't because I've spoken to audio modeling. It certainly won't have anything like this, uh, this kind of touch interface. So if you want to play on your iPad screen or your iPhone screen, um, then GeoShred is a very good choice. If you have no interest in playing keyboard, uh, even on a, on a screen, uh, if you're someone who just uses MIDI, this is not going to be the right app for you at this moment in time. So I think it's important for me to make that clear to people. I really want, you know, the viewers um, on my channel to, uh, know, you know, know that I'm going to tell them very clearly uh, the pros and cons of any app that comes out. And as I said, this is still a little bit buggy for me in AUM, um, getting some, you know, weird glitchy sounds, sometimes changing presets. Hopefully that's going to be fixed by the time the... Um, the, the actual uh, release version of the app comes out because they did start working on that yesterday. I just haven't been able to test it yet. Um, not on the version that is being released. I'm on one before that. Um, as I said, also still a few little niggles with the Seaboard. It's performing a lot better than it was uh, a week or so ago before some of the major problems got fixed, but still have had some issues with it. So. I hope that those things are going to be fixed by the time the app comes out, or at least in one of the early uh, updates. But um, I do want to say uh, these people do strike me as a bunch of great uh, developers. Uh, me and Pat in particular have exchanged seriously, like probably well more than 100 emails. And uh, yeah, they're uh, very committed, I think, to getting this fixed up as best they can. At the same time, um, you know, people are really um, kind of crying for this app to come out because there's a lot of people that have been waiting for it for months and months and they're sort of getting tired of waiting. So yeah, it is still being pushed out while at least from my side, still a little bit buggy. So there you go, everybody. I hope you find this useful. Um, please do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Usually putting out two or three videos a week at the moment, although I'm not really sure if I can sustain that long term. Um, I'm very frank in my uh, reviews on apps and I usually have some free codes to give away. So yeah, I hope you found this useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and write something in the comments and so on. And I'll see you in a future video. And once again, thanks a lot to Pat and Jordan and everybody else um, for yeah being pretty great uh, bunch of developers, actually. All right, everyone, take care. Good luck.